Okay, inverse relations and inverses of functions. You have done inverses before. Um, it would have been in geometry just a little bit, but we'll refresh that here in a little bit. But basically, inverses maps the outputs to inputs. So in other words, you're going to take your domains, all your x values and your ranges, and they're going to switch. So like your original function, nope, uh, great googly moogly, did it again. Mm -hmm. okay. So your original function, let's say for your domain, you got certain numbers. For your range, you got certain numbers. Okay, for the inverse function, these switch spots with those. So what used to be your domain is now your range and whatever is your range becomes your domain. So here's some numbers to kind of put together what I'm talking about. Um, here are all your domains and here are all your ranges. So if I want to come up with an inverse, these range values switch spots and become your domains. So one, three, five, seven. And your domains over here become your ranges. So here, I'll try to color code this a little bit. I'm gonna graph these ordered pairs, these points. I'm gonna pretend like this is a table for uh, graphs. So like, see what, zero, one, right here. Uh, we've got two, three, uh, four, and then one, two, three, four, five. I've got six, seven. Right about there, and there's my points for all those. So six up to seven. I feel like I plotted one of those wrong. So four, five, so zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so here in a different color, I'm gonna map out the inverse in pink. One, zero, I'm gonna go over three, and I'm gonna go two. I'm gonna go over to five and four, and I'm gonna go over six, or sorry, seven and up six. Okay, and I don't know how well you remember your ge geometry, but this is the definition of a function in geometry. You've got this line, y is equal to x. Its slope is one, its y-intercept is zero, so it's right here. Yeah, that's the one I didn't plot right. Now I see it. It's that guy right there. I only went to three. It should be right there. All of these points should be a reflection over that green line. And by reflection, I mean from blue point to pink point. Okay, so from blue to pink, they're all one half, one diagonal of those boxes away, or half the diagonal. Okay, that's the geometric way, because they are a reflection of the line y is equal to x. Okay, so that's the geometry way to prove two things are uh, inverse of each other. Okay, so I graph the line, there's my slope, there's my y-intercept. I'm gonna go to y-intercept over there, up two over one, up two over one, up two over one, down two over one. There's my first line there in pink. In my next line, I'm gonna go, and I'm gonna start at about one half, and I'm gonna go up one over two, up one over two, up one over two, or uh, let's see, up one over two, up one over two, up one over two. Kind of looks like that you can see that this bottom line is clearly not a reflection over that line so not an inverse and inverse there we go se if you quite don't understand what line i'm talking about i'll put that one on there again i'm gonna put y is equal to x so there's the line y is equal to x does it look like if i were to go right to that line, that distance is the same as, say, that distance? No, so again, not an inverse. Now, if you think that's a little bit cumbersome, I'm gonna show you another way to prove these things are an inverse. Okay, anyways, um, think back to the vertical line test. There are functions if they pass the vertical line test. So a parabola looks like this. 
Okay, rough sketch. Um, we now have the horizontal line test to figure out whether or not the inverse is also a function. So if I were to go through and I were to put down a horizontal line like this, since this touches the graph twice, the inverse is not a function. This here is a function, but the inverse isn't. Okay, here's the cube root, looks something like that. Okay, and then we've got, again, the vertical line test that it passes. So this is actually right here a function. And if I draw a bunch of horizontal lines, it keeps on touching the line that just wants. So the inverse is a function. I, what I want to stress is just because it's not a function doesn't necessarily mean there's not an equation. It just means that that's not a function. Okay. So uh, just to make things a little bit quicker, there's a quadratic. Um, if I go down four, this minus four just means that it shifts down four. That means that it's gonna be narrow. Um, without making the full graph, that means I get something that looks kind of like that. Okay, Is the inverse a function? And the answer is no, it doesn't pass the horizontal line test see all right so getting to how to find out it's a first if it's a function or not um i'm i'm wondering are f and g both functions of each other and here's a more algebra way of doing it rather than actually graphing out the line okay i'm going to do f of x oh sorry f of g of x so composition of functions just like before so that means i'm going to start with f and wherever i saw this x i'm going to replace it with G, those cancel out. X minus two plus two, those cancel out. I'm left with just X, that's good. So check, if this works out to be X, I'm halfway there or halfway home to proving that's inverse of each other. The other is I gotta go in reverse. So I gotta make G the outside function and F the inside function. So we'll go X is right out here, minus two over three. So if I have three X plus two, those will cancel out. I got three X over three. They cancel out to be x, so check. Yes, they are inverses of each other. And you think about it, if I go through and list the operations, addition and subtraction are inverse functions of each other. Multiplication and division are inverse functions of each other. So how do you write an inverse? Well, here's what you do, is you take, if it is in function notation, this f of x, just replace it with a y. It's a little bit easier to deal with. Uh, don't worry about that so much. Um, maybe that's a pre-calc kind of concept. So now, remember at the very beginning for the ordered pair, I just switched the domains and ranges around because I knew some values of X and Y. This time I don't know all the values of X and Y, so I'm just gonna actually switch the variables around. So wherever I see a Y, I'm gonna put an X in its place. Wherever I see a Y or an X, I'm gonna put a Y in its place. But I'm gonna keep all the operations, oops, fourth, the same. And now I'm going to solve to find my new equation for y. So the inverse of 1 fourth is to multiply by 4. And the inverse of squaring is to take the square root. And I end up with 2 square roots of x equals y. <coughs> and again, it um, makes sense because to um, square something, square roots, it's inverse. Um, the inverse of division or fraction multiplication is multiplication. So I'm going to name my new function g of x, and I'm going to see whether or not they actually are inverses. Okay, so I'm going to go f of g of x. So 1 fourth squared. Okay, square this, I get 1 fourth times 4, and then the square root will go away. 1 fourth of 4 is just x, good to go. Switch them around. So 2 square roots of 1 fourth x squared. Okay, make sure that square roots the whole way through. Square root of 1 fourth is 1 over 2. Square root of x squared is x. Those two will multiply together, and there, I got x. So yes, we did it correct. 
this is actually the inverse of my original parabola. Okay, so here, if I, and I'll let you verify it here, but I know that my answer at the very end is gonna have addition and it's gonna have the fifth root because the inverse of subtraction is addition and the inverse of taking something to the fifth power is the fifth root. So let's get that back into the old y equals form and then we'll put the y and the x's in their opposite spots. Very important that you keep the operations where they're at. I didn't switch any operations around. So now I'm gonna isolate the y to the fifth, so I'm gonna add six. And the fifth root will undo the fifth power. And there's nothing to simplify out of x plus six. So here's my new function that I'm gonna call g of x. And there is my inverse.